Hi everyone and welcome back to Multiplicity Crafts. Today we're going over the five basic paper quilling shapes for beginners. Now I'm a beginner myself so this will be good for us both to go through this together. Now here you can see I have my paper trimmer out. I do have an eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock and I'm just cutting little fourth inch strips of paper. Um, this is a 65 pound cardstock. And here, the reason I'm doing this is to get my little strips to quill or to roll up. Now, you can buy these pre-made, but I decided since I was a beginner and I didn't really want to invest any money in this, just to make my own to see if I even liked it, which, spoiler alert, I did. <laughs> so, anyway, I just, for my first piece of art here, I just have just a plain piece of craft card stock and I'm going around it with, um, I'm going to trace this cup with my pencil and that'll give me just a round shape. I'm going to just have a round frame for this particular piece of art, I guess you could call it. And off to the right there you can see I do have my um, glue already out on my acrylic block. Now I want to begin by kind of breaking up the fibers of the paper so that way my paper will curl a little easier rather than fighting against me. So I actually have, there's two different kinds of glue you can use for this. You can use like just the regular white Elmer school glue, which I do use. Um, but really for the frame of it, I would recommend something a little bit faster drying like the Zig two-way glue pen, which I'm showing here. And basically I'm just tracing around the circle that I've already drawn and this will give me my uh, my border frame or my wall to my art. Now while I'm doing this, let me say that when I first started this um, practicing, I didn't think I was going to like it because of this very thing. When you have to build this border wall, it is very touchy. It just, you feel like you can't get it to stay. So I would recommend just doing half of the piece at once or even just a quarter of the piece. Just do it in small sections. So while I'm doing this, let me explain a little bit what paper quilling is. Basically, it's just the art of rolling up paper, coiling it, um, not curling it, coiling it, <laughs> and, um, you know, folding it in different shapes and designs. And you just glue that onto paper or some sort of a canvas, and it creates just a cohesive piece of art. So basically, that's what paper quilling is. So going back here to this border frame I'm doing, you can see it's just such a small piece of paper you have to glue. It's just the very edge of the paper that you're gluing down onto your work surface. So that's why it's really important to have a fast drying glue because if you don't, you have to hold it there for a really long time and it just, it collapses and it gets very, very frustrating. Also another tip is use the 65 pound cardstock. Don't just use like printer paper or something thin like that because it just doesn't work as well. Now, you'll notice here my paper is a little bit too short to make a complete circle. So I'm just gluing a little bit um, onto the excess. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gluing a little bit onto the end there so I will have some excess. And then you can just cut away what you don't need. And that way you can have a complete circle, you know, that'll meet up. So if you ever have that problem where you don't have a piece that's long enough or that's going to work, just go ahead and glue that into place. You can also do this on, like let's say you want to make a, a particular um, coil or a particular shape or something and your strip is not long enough to make it be very thick. Well that's where you can also use this technique. You can just add onto your um, original, I guess that would be um, 11 inch strip and um, you know, and really you can cut this out of 12 by 12 paper, but most people would probably have the 8.5 by 11 cardstock on hand. So that's why I chose this size. And that way it's just a nice standard size. And again, when you glue this in place, you do have to hold it a little while just to make sure it, you know, it, it grabs onto the paper. So once you feel that it's stable enough, you can go ahead and add more inside as far as your art and your paper quilling. And remember when you add your paper quilling inside of this, it's really going to add a lot more stability to that outside frame. 
I know it kind of feels like, oh my goodness, this is going to be so flimsy, but really, once you add all of your paper inside there, it is very secure, and it's, I was really surprised how sturdy of a piece of art it is. Uh, it will even stand up in the mail, like if you were to mail it, most of these you know, I, I don't even see that they would get damaged. So it's really sturdy, believe it or not. But as you saw there, you know, I just went ahead and cut away the excess um, paper. And I would recommend some nice sharp pointed scissors to do that with because if you just have some that have a blunt edge, it doesn't cut as well. Um, if you go like in at an angle like I just did. So what I use is just the Cutter B scissors by EK Success. And those are perfect. I will have those linked in the description box below over on my blog. Now here is the actual quilling tool and I don't know if you can see it or not but basically it's just a little small metal stick and it does have a slit cut so that gives your paper a place to insert in. Now if you don't have it really close and you don't have the best eyesight like I don't um, you might have to get it kind of close to see to put it in initially but once you get the hang of it it's really easy and I'll have one of these um, where I got this particular uh, quilling tool I actually ordered it off eBay for a really reasonable price so I will have that link below so once your paper is inserted you just want to start rolling it up it's really really easy I usually just put my fingers on either side and just kind of um, to add a little bit of, I guess, tension, you could say, just to keep the, the curl nice and tight. And you just wind it up. Now, there are different um, tools that you can use for quilling that will even give you different shapes, like rectangles and whatnot. But for this particular tutorial, we'll just be going over just the, the round coil um, circular shapes. Now when you get to the very end, you just want to take a little bit of your glue. Now this is just plain school glue I'm using on the end here. And just add just a little bit on the end. And go ahead and I like to glue it into place while it's still on the tool. And that way it doesn't lose its, I guess, the tightness of the curl. Now later on I'll show you how you can loosen up the, the curl if you're wanting a little bit different look. But for this one I was wanting to keep it a tight um, coil so we have it and you can see there when I take it off the tool it's nice and secure and make sure the the glue is nice and dry and once it is you can just take some tweezers it doesn't have to be craft tweezers even just regular tweezers will work just fine and just take your piece and just dip it into your glue you have laid out there and I just usually coat the back of it just a nice thin coat on the edge of the paper there on the back and then you just want to go in and place it where you want it this one I'm going to place against the sidewall there just to add a little bit of stability to the sidewall now I could go in with different colors and just make this fill this whole thing like this and make a design in there with different you know shapes colors whatever but um, for this tutorial I'm not exactly looking to do that I'm just trying to show you some basic designs so here we're going to do a totally different look. I say totally different. It's still going to be circular, but it'll be a different look than the one we previously did. Now we're going to start off again, just like we did before. Go ahead and put your paper into the tool and just start curling that up. And I go ahead and no matter what size I want it, you always want to start just doing it really tight, like winding it up really tight. And you can kind of adjust as you go just to make sure that it stays even and tight on your uh, quilling tool. And again here, you may notice I'm improvising a little with a tool I already had. This is just a little circle template I had on hand. They actually have these for quilling. But if you'll take your paper and just put it in the size of the circle you want and just let it unravel, it'll give you the exact size you want. And then you can hold it and glue it into place. And that way, if you want to do all of them, let's say the same size, you'll have uniform size that way. So you don't just have to guess at the, the size or the diameter of the circle. So like I say, this is not the exact tool um, that a professional paper quiller would use. But it's what I had on hand. And since I was a newbie and just trying it out, 
I thought, hey, let me just use what I have. And this actually worked out pretty good, believe it or not. So, uh, yeah. And then you can see, I hope it shows up there. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you can kind of see the different layers in that particular paper quilling piece. It does look a lot different than the one that's tightly wound above. So, yeah, you can just see that gives you a little bit different look there on that uh, particular one. And if you want, you can even take your quilling tool and, and drag some of those rings of your curl down. And you can glue those in place down there. And that'll give you a totally different look. Like, let's say you're doing, you know, a peacock or something. And you want to have, like, those for part of the feather. You know, you could do that. Or, you know, really for any anything. Also, you can go ahead and um, pull your little rings of your curl down and pinch those in place and you can make kind of a, a leaf shape or even like a cat eye shape with this uh, and of course if you had it in green it would look more like a leaf but I'm, I'm just showing you different shapes you can do this one's kind of a just a teardrop shape so again when you're ready to glue that down just kind of coat the back of your uh, paper with a little bit of glue and just find a spot you would like to place that and lay it down and it will stay in place. If you do place it next to the sidewall of your, um, I guess the frame you could call it, of your art, you can always go in with your glue like I'm doing here, just a little bit inside there and stick that to your uh, sidewall and it'll add some more stability for you. Okay, so now on to the third piece. Now this, I'm showing you how you can do paper quilling if you don't want a tight coil in the very center of your, um, your design. If you want more of like an open circle, I guess you could say. So if you just have like a little skewer or something, even an ink pen, just depending on the diameter you're wanting, you can just wrap it around just as long as the shape is, is uniform. And this I don't really recommend because it's going to kind of make you not want to do paper quilling because it's not real easy to keep that paper um, taut on that particular, like on a skewer or something. So, but it is an option if you just need to do a piece here or there, or if you just want to, you know, see how it would look or something. But I am showing this just to show you, you can do it without a, a quilling tool like I was using, but it's, I don't know. I, I particularly did not care for this technique. Um, but it, it does give you a different look if you don't want the tight center in the middle of your, uh, paper. So after you glue that into place, you just want to hold it for just a couple seconds there, just to make sure that the glue is adhered down because otherwise your paper will come all the way unraveled and you'll just have to start all over again. So um, again, you can just use regular tweezers and just coat the back of it with glue and just stick it on there wherever you want it and it will look um, really nice. Actually, I think if you had all like this particular um, diameter, I think you could really make a nice piece. You know, if you didn't have the quilling tool and you were just itching to try and do a craft, I mean, you could really do this. It just is not going to be as easy as if you have the actual quilling tool. So now on to our fourth way that we can um, design our paper. This is going to be a heart shape and all you do is just take a piece of your quilling paper. Now I did cut this one down so it's a little bit shorter and you just want to fold it in half and go ahead and um, put it on your quilling tool and just roll the paper towards that center fold you just made and when you get to that center crease you can go ahead and stop and release the paper and then you can go ahead and just take the other side and just roll it in the same way to the center crease when you get to the center crease go ahead and remove your paper off of the quilling tool and this will give you a nice little heart shape so you do have to kind of work with it and find where your crease was and just kind of maneuver the paper to where you want it. 
and once you have a pretty heart shape you can go ahead and glue the two uh, top curves of the heart together and that's really all you need to hold this one in place it's super easy um, I even took some of these and used together in like a green paper and I made some shamrocks I will insert a picture of that at the very end so you can see how that looks but just for a basic heart this is a very easy way to do that and just like we did before once you have that glued in place and it seems like it's pretty dry, go ahead and use your tweezers and add a little bit of glue on the back side of your fold and just put that where you want it on your canvas or on your paper. So I'm going to just put it here on the edge. Now you don't have to put all of them on the edge like I'm doing here. I'm just doing that because if I were to begin a piece, I would probably start with the edges to add some security. So now we're on the fifth and final fold. Now this one is similar to the heart that I just did where we're going to start and fold the paper in half. But this time we're going to do more of like scroll work or it could even be the letter S. Now I'm going to, um, instead of coiling those both toward the center fold, I'm going to do one away and one, um, let's see, how would I say that? I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to curl one away from me and one towards me, I guess. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense because once I flip the paper, it's going to go back over anyway. Well, you see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm making the letter S because um, this is going to be really effective to be like a space filler, this uh, scroll work. And if you did it in a contrasting color, I think it would look even better. But here, you know, I'm not really looking to make art at this point. I'm just doing very abstract and... Um, but anyway, yeah, you just kind of um, play with the paper, just make it, you know, lay how you want it, and uh, go ahead and just glue it down. So, yeah, those are some very basic ideas, and again, you know, you see um, how to just go ahead and glue that in place, and, um, and the cleanup's really easy because the glue, especially if you put it on like a surface like your acrylic block or something that Elmer's glue once it dries it just peels off in a sheet so it's really really easy to clean up and it doesn't ruin your acrylic block or anything so yeah that's pretty much all I hope you found this um, video helpful and I do hope to do more of these in the future if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below and as promised, I will show you here is where I put the shamrocks together using the heart shapes and just adding a few different little uh, coils here and there. And then the rainbow shape below is a bunch of tightly, tightly wound coils. So that was a lot of fun. But anyway, yeah, if you like this video, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Have a great day.